we have the goggles. Give me your hand here. Yep. I got this one. Oh. <laughs> I'm in the middle of Los Angeles County right now, in a tank, indoors, in a warehouse with 25,000 shrimp. Wow, I got zero. And we're gonna see how transparency is raising them, harvesting them, and selling them. Transparency is trying to optimize the prawn growing process. They think that by controlling growing conditions, they can raise them cleaner, cheaper, and more sustainably than farms across the world. Transparency is the brainchild of a guy named Steve Sutton, a lifetime commercial fisherman who spent years on shrimp farms across the world before deciding he could reinvent the process right in Los Angeles. The team brings in 100,000 microscopic prawn babies every three weeks with the goal of turning them into $100,000 worth of jumbo prawns in just three months. The next step is tinkering with the ideal living conditions, whether that's feed rates, filtration, and current, to create the biggest, happiest shrimp they can. And to this point, it's really working. LA chefs are lining up to cook with this product. So today, I'm in Los Angeles to see if this is a model that can really work and create a product that is not only better for the planet, but even more delicious. Welcome to Dan Does. So this would be a box overnighted from FedEx with about 12,000 shrimp in it. Really? Yeah. Be one of eight boxes we receive every three weeks. So we get about 100,000 uh, each shipment. So like eight boxes becomes? Around $100,000 worth of saleable shrimp if all goes well. So what is actually in here? They're actually 15 day old, what's called post larvae. So why don't you just make babies here? Like why do you have to bring babies in? So the genetics are super important. Uh, you can kind of be a penny wise, a pound foolish. If you don't have a good handle on the mother and father and like how fast they can grow and how they're resistant they are to disease, you can end up with shrimp that take 14, 17 weeks instead of 12 weeks to grow. And so you lose a lot of money on that. So every three weeks we get a new shipment. We'll open it up, then they're gonna go into the nursery. Steve says that in the next iteration of the farm, they intend to hatch their own prawns, but for now they wanna get the living conditions right before they have their own babies. From here, the team slowly drops the salinity down to the level they want it before dumping the babies in one of the two nursery tanks. The nursery tanks use a technology called BioFlock, which is where they add carbon to create a natural self-filtering ecosystem. The later tanks use a technology called Clearwater, where the undesirables are actually filtered out. Okay, so we are standing in front of their two nurseries, and each one of these nurseries will hold the prawns for about three weeks. That's right and in three weeks, they're ready to move on to the next stage. We're lucky to be here today because today is actually transfer day and the goal is to move everything from this nursery to a grow tank as fast as possible. Now these ones have to move in the next day or two. So yeah, it's, it's a good day. All right, let's scoop them and move them. Don't fall in. Down towards the ground. Oh my God, they're hopping. Oh, I feel them. You feel them? Let's see what you got. Now give them a little shake in the water to get that foam out. So now, now you're gonna try to collect with your hands. There you go, you got them down in one spot. Just keep going all the way around, you got them. The trick of the transfer stage is moving all of the prawns as fast as possible so that they acclimate and start eating and adjust to their new environment all at the same time. So for this next few hours, it's kind of a mad dash. Whoa! All right, so shake. Yeah, lower them in, turn the basket forward, and then shake on the way out. They grow a lot better in here. It takes them a couple days to get situated and then they start taking off and growth. These guys are already eating. They'll clean up the walls. Any, any algae that's grown in the past few days in here will be gone. Okay, so what is this tank? Like obviously it looks like a, a racetrack a bit. Is, yeah. that, is that on purpose? Yeah, so it's actually called a raceway. Basically it's, it's an optimal growing system for shrimp and what it does is just create a circular current. Water comes in at two points in our system here and um, keeps them swimming. So it's good. funny, like, until they hit the water, they're kind of out of it, they're yeah. kind of like asleep. And then they hit the water and they just go, Whoa. Oh yeah, life. Why are we calling prawns? Are they prawns or shrimp? They're technically prawns, but the market calls them white shrimp. Okay. They're white, Pacific white leg prawn is the actual species. So your goal here is to be like the most efficient shrimp grower in the world, right? We want to change a really inefficient industry into one that's as efficient as it can possibly be. This farm is a big step. So let's talk about some of the, the elements of this tank. First is the, the feeder. Um, is this unique to you or is this like a... No, these are really common in aquaculture. It's just a timer with a belt. So there's a timer here and the belt just slowly creeps forward. So we come in in the morning, we fill the belt, we weigh out the feed based on the, the size and the population, and we fill the belt and it slowly drops in. It seems to me that filtration is like the thing that you don't see in these tanks. 
but that is like the majority of the headache and the operations that, that go into it, right? For the filtration, first a drum filter uses centrifugal force to remove all the physical solids from the water. Then for the dissolved waste, the water is pumped into giant tanks with a plastic medium that uses its surface area to attract the undesirables. Mastering the filtration allows transparency to reuse over 95% of its water. This room is obviously really hot and it's at 86 degrees you said? Yeah. Is this the kind of thing where like you would try it at 90, try it at 80, just to see where you're gonna get the most growth? This shrimp's grown around the world. It's a tropical species that's from Mexico all the way down to Peru. They can survive up to 93 degrees, but they could start to have problems at that temperature. Similarly, they can go down to 65, but they're not gonna grow very much. They're gonna be very, very sluggish. So this is just their prime temperature and allows us to be much more efficient. They don't fight current. They don't fight cold temperatures at night. Everything's stable. So from here, we'll live out here for eight weeks and then we can go check out some harvesting right now? Yeah, right now we have five crops on the farm. So we have a baby crop. This is our second youngest crop. It's about 30 days on the farm. We have another crop that's about three weeks ahead and another crop six weeks ahead. Awesome, let's go. Oh, whoa, okay, you can see that these are, so this is mid-level, mid-size. Mid-size. What reason would you actually have to like monitor? Like what are, we, what are we checking on? Daily we check the bottom and in order to grow shrimp molt, so they change their shell. When they're tiny, like those little guys, they're molting every day in order to grow. When they're this size, they're probably molting every several days. By the time they're harvest size, they're molting every two weeks. If there are too many molts sitting on the bottom, they'll collect feed and they'll start to rot, basically. Right. And if that happens in the course of two, three days, everything will be dead. Can we scoop some out? Let's do it. Why are we going to the bottom? Just There's generally more at the bottom. They do like to swim in our system, but you got some, maybe 20, 25. And so very simply, like what, what is your system here? So it goes through these screens and down these six inch pipes into a two 12 inch pipes that go down to the actual filtration equipment. These guys are feeding and they're active and just like us, they respire, they produce, they use oxygen, they produce carbon dioxide. We need to take some of that out and then it'll be pumped through some sterilization equipment down this 12 inch pipe and to each respective tank. From here, I have to get a wetsuit on so I can actually get in the tank. All right, time to harvest. I'm gonna need you to put this on. Oh, suit? Yep. We're gonna harvest tank four. How do I look? Two, three. You look great. You look very handsome. I really do not want to get into this water right now. These guys have been on the farm now for two months. Coming up on just about ready to harvest. It is wild. Look how they all, I mean, they're huge. They're all sort of uniform. Well, they sort of look like they all got somewhere to go. I was sort of stalling because I was super nervous to get in the tank with all these swimming shrimp. It is not something that I'm incredibly comfortable with. The first step is actually pulling up the raceway so we can use half of the tank to trap the shrimp in a net, which will eventually pull up. <laughs> They're like, this is my tank. <laughs> You're in their world now. And now this top part's gonna come down and you're just gonna cinch them together. This is great stuff. Like I can feel the you're feeling some like attacks mm -hmm. on your my feet. Yeah. Why don't you wear why don't you wear water shoes? We don't wear water shoes because we want to feel how the tank is. We want to see if it's clean, if it's dirty, where the molts are, um, and how the shrimp are doing. So we could wear water shoes. If you want to. I have booties if you want. No, no, no. Come on. <laughs> I'm I'm in it for the long haul here. I cannot tell I mean they are they love my feet. I'm doing good. I like it. I mean you're not moving a lot, which is fine. <laughs> But you always drag your feet, you're always shuffling? Yeah, shuffle. I usually walk on my big toes. Okay. Um, we're gonna take our seine net, it's 25 feet around, and I'm gonna have you go all the way across, and just hug that net against the wall, and then you're gonna go full circle all the way through. How am I doing? We'll find out. When is it? Good. It gets a little dicey once we get closer, right? Yeah. <laughs> all right, so now we have a big O. Yep. And my next step is getting out of the O. So we've probably okay. got 50 pounds of shrimp in this same net right now. <laughs> all right, so all this this here is our catch. Yes. They're all at the bottom now. From here, the goal is to trap all the shrimp that are caught in the net. But for today's purpose, we're just doing one quick restaurant run, and the batch isn't totally ready. So we're letting a lot go before we actually harvest. We got some shrimp. We got some shrimp. We're going to find out right now. Matthew's going to sort them. But overall, you did well. So that's our haul. That's your catch, man. The last step is moving the shrimp to the counting, processing, weighing room where they'll be divided between sizes and then packaged up to go to restaurants. So we got about 
A little less than nine pounds. This is because you're taking out one restaurant's order. This would be like 50 pounds, right? So normally we would do anywhere from 100 to three or 400 pounds in a day. Mm -hmm. So this sorting table that we're about to use would be full. The shrimp are sorted into large jumbo and actually soft shell shrimp, which is something that is not typically seen in the US. You're selling them based on weight. So there's a cutoff where they're not growing much more. So our target size is, is large which is just an arbitrary naming of a, of a shrimp that's around 30 grams. Anything bigger than that, we call a jumbo. And we get them you know, bigger than my hand. So these actually are pretty unique. Oh, I got one, I got one. He's got one. Yeah. 25, baby. That's a large. Cause I'm cheap. Oh, is that a soft shell? Soft hat? Yeah, he's on the soft. It's yeah. so crazy that this bucket starts from those little guys you bring in. Yeah, and it's crazy on a full day. I mean, we'll fill that fridge with these bins. Yeah, I mean, these are all about 19, 20, 21 grams. We'll get these packaged up and move them out to the restaurant. Sounds good. This is our product. So there's your five pound catch. We're gonna bring these to the restaurant later, but uh, we've got the rest of them to, to mess around with. Wow, that's insane. Tasting that, I feel like I'm in like Spain or something, you know, off some coast or something. And yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah. the idea is if we're going to change an industry that's got a lot of problems. You got to win. You got to have the best stuff. We got to make high quality stuff. In order for Steve's mission to work, he has to have the best prawns. And I wanted to see what a top chef would do with them. So we took a batch over to the Michelin recognized Holmosh. Yeah. So we got the big ones coming in about two weeks. We want to bring okay. you some of the new batch to get started. Yeah, these look great, man. I'm going to take these inside and uh, I'm going to make an agua chile. See what else we can do with them. That's good. All right. With shrimp of this quality, I mean, you can eat it just like that. Good health. I mean, agua chile is a northern Mexican variation on a ceviche. The whole idea of it, it's supposed to be spicy, tangy, refreshing, and simple. And you need really high quality shrimp to make it work. Were you surprised when you got his shrimp first? You know, I, I got the news from Steve that the project had moved to Downey. It sounded like a super complicated project. First I'm like, wait, you're gonna farm shrimp in LA? like most expensive land in the country, you're gonna do a shrimp farm. I'm like, okay, well that's ambitious, um, but I love the idea of having fresh shrimp in the neighborhood. I mean, that's wild. Well, shrimp is gonna be one of the easiest things to source. It's actually been the hardest thing to source. Cheers. Cheers. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, tangy. A little spice. These little things were, sh were hitting me in the leg today. This is incredible. It's so crazy to me because to me, like this is the balance of like art and technology. The summer's gonna be good. I hope so, man. People are calling. After seeing how a chef like Gilberto reacted to the product and just how good it tasted, I thought this could really be something, you know? And that's exciting because if the model works, there could be hundreds of these farms across the country providing all kinds of hyper-local, sustainable seafood not just to restaurants, but to grocery stores. And it seems like that would both improve our food systems and give people access to a healthier, more delicious product. So uh, it's really about if we can get everybody to kind of win. The beauty of it, it's driven by the people who pay for his food and eat it. Sure. Yeah. If they make the choice to pay more for something that's sustainable, and he's conveying well the message to them, and his servers know what to say, cooks the product beautifully, I mean, it's kind of how it has to be. Hmm. Amazing, well, thank you so much. and. Thank you. You got it. Greasy shrimp hand. No, it's okay.